LDAP authentication and remote users and groups. Okay everyone, in this video we're gonna do LDAP integration in our Palo Alto firewall. We have an AD environment, you know, that's where all your users are currently using to authenticate onto your environment. You got an Active Directory environment and we're gonna integrate that to the firewall so the firewall can do policy enforcement based on username. Step one, we're gonna create a service account and this will be a username on your Active Directory environment that will be used by the Palo Alto to query that information. So the Palo Alto will basically do a call to the AD domain controller and it's gonna pull that information and then based on that information is gonna be able to enforce the rules. So once you put that user account into a specific security policy, Firewall will basically do an LDAP query and it's gonna find that information and see if there's a match for that user in that particular group. For example, if we put a policy into a specific group, then the Palo Alto Firewall needs to see that user is requesting to access a specific destination and it's matching against the policy, then the Palo Alto will query and see if that user actually is a member of the group that that is added onto that particular security policy. Alrighty, so let's begin. And by the way, here on the slide, we have the two formats that you can create, or you can basically tell the Palo Alto firewall how the user attribute will be looked upon. So SAM account name means that you're just gonna have that uh, username and then user principal name will gonna have basically an email format. So it starts with the username at domain name and that will be your fully qualifying domain name. So we're gonna have those two options and we're gonna work with SAM account name but it's gonna be the same with user principal name. Alrighty, so let's begin. Okay, so I'm gonna start by showing you that I created a couple of security groups. So I want to show the benefit of having AD integration. I will be configuring some security groups in Active Directory. And then in Active Directory, any member of that group will be applying a specific policy in our Palo Alto. So now that you're gonna see that I have those security groups onto on AD, I'm gonna classify traffic based on user groups. And then every member of that group will be enforced upon that specific policy on the Palo Alto. So if we take a look here real quick, this is one of my domain controllers. And by the way, our domain name will be padomain.local. So that will be our active directory forest name. Inside that domain, I have my user OU, organizational unit. I, in this particular OU, I make three groups. One of them will be the full access. That group will basically be group that will have access to all internet. It's gonna be on filter, it's gonna be on restricted internet access. Every member of the HR staff is gonna be able to go to specific servers that I have on my DMZ. And then I also have restricted internet, meaning that if I have group uh, people inside that group, they're not gonna be able to go anywhere because on the Palo Alto, I'm gonna put a policy that will block traffic based on whoever is member of that group. Finally, I am going to make another group in AD, which is gonna be the firewall admins group. Every member that is inside that admins group is gonna be able to manage the firewall. So they're gonna be able to go into the firewall and make policy changes and do management on the web interface. And again, we need a service account. So this will be a specific user account that will be used to synchronize the Palo Alto so the Palo Alto can perform LDAP queries into my local PA domain, that local domain. We have a service account, we're gonna use PA domain SA and my account name is gonna be Palo Alto LDAP SVC service account. I basically did an abbreviation on that. So it's gonna be Palo Alto LDAP SVC. So you wanna pay attention to this because once we go to the Palo Alto, I'm going to use that user account to perform the sync. Okay, and then again, we have a couple of groups, HR staff, full access, firewall admins, and restricted. So those groups will be applied a specific firewall policy. So any member of that group will be enforced onto a specific security policy. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and start configuring the Palo Alto and do that LDAP integration. Okay, so here in our Palo Alto, we're gonna click device and we're gonna click LDAP. So once we go into the device tab, we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna click on LDAP, and this is where we're gonna add our domain controller. So let's click on add, okay? And we're gonna call this VPA domain. That's our name. And then we're gonna add my domain controller inside this profile. Name, this will be PA domain DC1, which is my domain controller number one. 
And here is, we're going to type that IP address, 10.10. .10. In my case is 45, that's my service IP. Now, we're gonna make an Active Directory. So on the server settings, we're gonna change the type from other into Active Directory, because in our case, we have in Microsoft Active Directory based environment. Based distinguish name, we're gonna go ahead and do a binding. So once we have that, we are gonna select our fully qualified domain name. So let's go ahead and uh, do the binding. And we mentioned ourselves that the service count was labeled Palo Alto LDAP SVC that PA domain dot local. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, if you can see, I'm doing it in user principal name, because remember in the beginning of the video, I was mentioning about two forms of doing it. I am doing basically user principal name for my binding purposes. Password. And let's type my password. And then we're just gonna press OK. So we got a binding, right? Now, what we need to do is make sure that the Palo Alto can use that service count, which is Palo Alto LDAP SVC at PA domain.local, right? And then once we confirm that, that it's able to talk, then we can do a query and, and see if well, we can find more information about domain and we can pull the user group. Okay, let me take a look and see if the PA was able to do a query and I should be able to see a base DN. So once I add this information, I should be able to see a base DN. Take a look. Oh, yes, there you go. So, so now I know that I'm actually able to pull that information. And this is the base distinguished name, which basically is the forest name, which is PA domain dot local. And then let's just press OK. So let's go ahead and click authentication profile. Now we're going to click on the add and let's make it the PA profile one. This time we're going to do a LDAP profile. Let's select our PA domain sync LDAP name, and then we're going to do the login attribute. So this is where we're going to tell the Palo Alto what type of format do we want to look on our username. In this case, if I can go, if I want to see emails as my username, so every user needs to put his user account in email format, then I'll type user principal name, capital U, capital P, capital N, UPN, or I can do some account name. And then in this case, you're going to see which letters are going to be in uppercase. And by the way, this is very important. It's case sensitive. So if you don't type the right capital letters, this will not work. So let's type Sam and you can see A M A all uppercase count and then N in capital N name. Okay. So that's basically Sam account name. And then now in advanced, we're going to say allow list and we're going to say, which member of that group, which groups can we pull out of the AD environment? In this case, let's say all the groups. And then from there, I can actually be specific on my policy. So I just want to see every single group in the AD environment, but then I'll select which ones do I want. If you only want to select a specific group from LDAP, then you can restrict the profile to only select those specific groups. But I don't care because I really can pull everything. And then on the policy, I'll select which ones do I want. So let me go ahead and just select all for now. And we don't need to do any type of additional factors to authentication to FA. So this should be good to go. Let's click OK. OK, so now we're going to do an authentication sequence. So an authentication sequence, we're going to tell the Palo Alto what goes first. Do you want to make sure that the user belongs to a local user group first? Or do you want to check LDAP first and then local user groups? Meaning that if the user has an account in the local Palo Alto, but it also does have an account in the LDAP environment, we want to make sure that the Palo Alto looks first in LDAP. If that doesn't work, then go and look on local. So it's basically you select what preference you want the Palo Alto to look upon at that specific user account. So let's go ahead and create an authentication sequence. And we're going to say PA alf sequence, and then we're going to add the authentication profile and then let's add the one that we created for LDAP. And now we need to add a new one. So let's go ahead and create that local authentication profile. Again, we did one authentication profile, which was LDAP. And now we got to do another authentication profile, but in this case, it should be local. So let's click on add again. Let's make another one. Let's say PA auth profile two. And then this type is going to be our local database. And then Basically, it's, it doesn't care what type of format, because in this case, I'm not going to query LDAP. It's just going to see the username that is on the local database. And then on advance, I'm going to select all group as check every single group that is on my allow list for this particular authentication profile. Then I'll click OK. 
And then once I have that, then I can use an authentication sequence to check which authentication form we're going to use to, to authenticate a user or, or grant access to a specific network policy. So if the user wants to go from inside to outside, then we have a way to identify that particular user. Let's go ahead and uh, go to authentication sequence. And then now, remember that we had authentication profile one. Now we're going to have the second one. So let's go ahead and click the second one. And now we know that this is the order. It first checks LDAP because that's auth profile one, and then it will check the local database. I'm gonna click OK. OK, so we have that. Now we need to make sure that we can pull those user groups. Also, very important, we want to make sure that we're having constant communication to our LDAP environment, and in this case, to our domain controller. So we can also do a monitoring policy for that server. So you click on user identification and here we can add the domain controller and we can know if the Palo Alto is able to query our domain controller. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so let's type our server name. In this case, it's PA domain one DC one. And then we're gonna type the IP address. So 10, 10, 20, 45, we'll click okay. Now we gotta commit. So if we don't commit, basically Palo Alto will not put this effective. So let's go ahead and click commit. Once we commit, we should be able to see that the Palo Alto is able to connect to the LDAP environment. Okay, and sure enough, there you go. We now know that, yes, user account is correct, is able to communicate, and it's showing that the status is connected. So we know that we're having good communication between our AD environment from the Palo Alto. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see if we can pull some user group. Okay, so... Taking a look at the user identification, we're gonna go into group mapping settings. We'll click group mapping settings. And this is where we're gonna map those user groups from AD so the Palo Alto can take advantage of them and use them on the policies. So let's click on add and we're gonna say PA domain group mapping. Let's select our server profile. In this case, it's the PA domain sync that we previously did on the LDAP session right below here. So let's click on PA domain sync. Okay, and now we can type the user domain name, but it's, you know, once we have the group class that this is what we want to pull out, then that should be it. But in this case, let's make it all clean. Let's make sure that we have all the information that we need to have on the group mapping. So let's type that domain name there, PA domain.local. And now we're gonna go into the user group and attributes and we know that the username, it's, it's gonna be look uh, upon the same account name attribute. Okay, and now we're gonna go into the include list and sure enough, I can see that I am able to connect to my AD environment. So let's expand this. Okay, so now we have the OUs and let's expand the users and there you go, we have them there. Okay, so let's go ahead and add those groups in our Palo Alto. So we mentioned firewall admins, full access, HR staff, and finally restricted internet. Okay, awesome. So we have that, let's press okay. And now we have a PA group mapping. Awesome, so let's go ahead and uh, make a policy and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, now we did that LDAP integration and we were able to see that the Palo Alto firewall can query our Active Directory domain controller. We should be able to make a security policy and enforce traffic based on those user groups that we have in our AD environment. So let's go ahead and do two policies. Policy number one, we're gonna restrict access to the internet for the restricted users or restricted internet group that we have in AD. We're gonna do another policy that will allow the full access group. So in this case, everyone that is a member of the full access group in AD will be able to go to every single website. Let's go ahead and do the first one. And again, we're gonna discuss security policies on an upcoming session. This is just to show you how to do it with user group. Let's go ahead and uh, click on security, click on add. And then once we click add, let's make the first rule. We're gonna say restrict internet, right? Let's click on source. And we're gonna say everyone going from the inside, going to the outside. But in this case, I want everyone from the inside that belongs to this specific user group, then We'll go to the outside and then we'll set up an action. Let's uh, find if and see if we can add those that group. And sure enough, now we can see that the Palo Alto is able to pull that information and we can see our groups in the Palo Alto for us to select. So let's select restricted internet because that's our restricted internet policy. 
we now know that everyone that is inside that group will no longer be able to go online going to say destination outside basically anywhere on the outside application will just leave a default same with uh, the service url and category and our case will be a deny and sure enough now everyone that belongs to my pa domain ad environment in this case the restricted internet group is not going to be able to go to the outside so let's move this policy so it becomes effective and again i will be discussing the policy order of operations on an upcoming video and then let's make the other policy which is allow full access so let's click on add and we're going to make another policy allowed internet or let's call full internet we're going to click on source click on add same source but in this case the user group will be the full access from my pa domain so let's click on full access and let's go and destination we're going to go to the outside and finally application service is going to be the same action allow all right this is very cool so we have first rule restrict internet anyone that matches on this group is not going to be able to go anywhere on the outside but then everyone that belongs to this group will be able to go to the outside and then finally we see the action the first one is deny the second one is allow okay so the last thing to make this effective press commit and we are done okay so we just finished our section two now we're going to begin section three we're going to take a look at doing firewall security zones and we're going to discuss palo alto interfaces